Hey, my little glib globs, are you ready to rock? It's time for part five of Glasgow's Rise to Power. Here we go. They called it Armageddon. Though the orcs aboard it were assailed by demons again and again, word killer's long journey finally came to an end. Whether by fate, the blind luck of warp travel, or the will of the orc gods, the space hulk emerged into real space in perfect attack formation above a key planet of the Imperium. The future of a thousand worlds hung in the balance. How long Grasgol and his followers drifted in the warp is not known. Time passes strangely there, and orcs are not known for keeping captain's logs. They explored the bounds of the vast space hulk, finding strange technology, ancient machines from humanity's lost past, and other apparatus beyond their comprehension. For some, especially the fucking death skulls, this meandering search included stealing everything, even if it was bolted down as they worked alongside burner boys whose arc welders cut through metal. The Death Skulls were able to appropriate anything, no matter how well fastened it was. On Glass Skull's command, many mechs began working on a force field projector. Meanwhile, competing warbands fought to gather scrap, and minor wars brought out, fought, broke out over salvage rights. This rivalry kept tensions at exactly the right level to prevent the volatile orcs from growing too bored. Sheets of iron decking were reworked into battle wagons and used to plate up stompas or beaten into crude body armor to outfit the knobs. In the mad fervor to claim metal, several war bands were swept into the warp when they overstretched their boundaries and cut away sections of the Space Hulk's outermost hull. It was this kind of fucking stupidity that allowed the warp entities to re-enter Word Killer. Several more demonic incursions plagued the journey, and Glasgow had to drive out the worst of these personally. With vicious battles breaking out across the Space Hulk, there was an abundance of violent wog energy, and the orcs thrived and multiplied. Soon, Every corner of the craft was bursting with more greenskins. Everywhere, swarms of grots scurried. The halls rang with the sounds of cries and shooter blasts and the commands of the ever-busy mechs. Gradually, the demon tides ebbed. The jubilant orcs were beginning to get restless when suddenly jolts alerted all that the lumbering space hulk was slowing down. With gut-lurching suddenness, World Killer ripped back into real space. What had been an empty void was now filled with the massive Space Hulk. Aboard the sprawling vessel, klaxons blared, and Glasgow's voice boomed out of the speakers, up and down the corridors, telling all to prepare for a bit of sport. Like a tidal wave, the momentum of the word killer sent the space hulk crashing forward. It smashed aside defense stations while panicked picket ships accelerated to get the fuck out of the path of the hurling space junk. The orcs had emerged at the edge of the star system vital to the Imperium, heading straight for the core planet. Before them sprawled the immensity that was Armageddon an industrial giant of mankind's realm. The planet lay roughly 10,000 light years to the galactic northeast of Terra. It was a vital node of navigational channels, and its countless manufactorum supplied munitions to Astra Militarum regiments throughout the sector and beyond. No force in the galaxy could now stop World Killer from crash landing on Armageddon. Guided by his visions, Grasgall did not wish to halt his flight. Rather, he welcomed the headlong plummet towards the world below. The acceleration built, and he billowed joyous war cries as the hull blazed with fire and the Hulk thundered down from Armageddon's sky like a scrap iron avalanche. Up until this point, Grasgall had only made for a name for himself on Urk, a little-known shithole and soon-to-be-dead star system. 
Soon, however, his name would send ripples of fear across hundreds of thousands of worlds. Now, Grazkal was on a collision course with greatness itself. Surrounding Imperial fleets, long-ranged missiles, and the planet's orbital defense lasers did their best to stave off the inevitable. Their firepower managed to shear away a few chunks of the oncoming Space Hulk, but they could not stop the terminal dive of World Killer, nor could they alter its course. Although shorn of a good deal of its mass by the desperate salvos, the enormous Space Hulk plunged through Armageddon's polluted atmosphere to crash land upon its largest continent, Armageddon Prime. The deep impact of the landing shook the entire planet, and its blast wave caused untold devastation. A cloud of debris shrouded the sun. Hundreds of thousands of orcs were instantly immolated by the cataclysmic contact of the landing. Their losses, however, were inconsequential, a tiny fraction of their total number. As the shock faded, a few of the orcs realized... We should all be fucking dead! In that epic crash, Grazkal claimed it was the protection of the orc gods themselves. Although, his building the force field projector and that absorbing the brunt of the impact doubtlessly helped as well. Regardless, the orcs roared their approval at still being alive after this exhilarating ride. Eager to release their pent-up aggression, they poured out of drop ramps or simply blasted new exit holes through the side of the Space Hulk and ready to unleash death and mayhem and generally fuck people up on the planet. Grasgall divided his followers into five distinct hordes, each one under one of his most powerful warlords. These were leaders Grasgall had subdued on Urk, ferocious orcs that had learned by fighting alongside him. Under the dust storm's darkness, the towering wild overlord pointed out the directions each of his sub-commanders should take. With a wave of his power claw, Grasgall launched endless columns of orcs, war machines, and living seas of infantry. With one voice... Many millions bellowed. The defenders of Armageddon were not ready for what hit them. The Astra Militarum and the planetary defense forces of Armageddon may have been well equipped, but they were wholly unprepared for the violence and mayhem that swept over their armies. It was clear that the humans had underestimated the strategic ability of their foes. They had fought orcs before, yes, but these green skins were different. This was not some petty warlord's minor wog for personal dominance. This was wog motherfucking Glasgow, people. Although none of his sub-commanders displayed the sheer audacity and cunning of their master, Glasgow had beat enough sense into their skulls about tactics for some of it to stick. They easily overwhelmed the PDF legions that advanced out of the hives to contain them. First, the orcs launched assaults to pin the foe in place on the flat ash wastes, while biker mobs and battle wagon brigades raced around to encircle their foes, cutting off their supply lines. Then the greenskins tightened the noose. They set up their mech gun batteries to pummel the panicked defenders left in their ever-shrinking cauldron. Desperate attempts to break out were met by gun lines. Mercilessly, the orcs mowed down anything that moved, laughing and guffawing at the lines of umis that advanced to meet only death, copying and mocking their final futile curses as they twitched their last upon the blood-stained ashed wasteland. While the plains, with the plains cleared, the orcs advanced on the hive cities, and they were astounded. 
built atop sprawling ash-blown waste deserts. The hives rose up taller than mountains. These were the great factory cities of the Imperium, the lifeblood of its non-stop war effort. This was the industrial might of a scale never before seen by the orcs. The mechs gazed slack-jawed at the hives with joy, imagining how they could repurpose such works, what they could build with such colossal hordes of material. The Fall of Hive Volcanus The Imperium's defense of the hives proved more formidable. The Astra Militarum's numbers were augmented by every regiment available along with hastily armed citizens. A long series of trenches and redoubts circled each vast walled complex. Grazkal took one look at Hive Volcanus before vowing boldly that it would fall in two days' time. Although his hordes were numerous enough to overwhelm the gates, Grazkal did not want to waste his strength. He had yet to unleash the full terror of his gargant big mobs. But he thought that prodigious firepower should be saved for when it was truly required. Instead, his plan to take the enormous factory city reflected his cunning. It was simple. It just needed flawless execution and seamless cooperation. A tall order for a typical WOG leader, but not so for Glasgow Mag Uruk Fraka. The outer barriers were targeted by blitz brigades, armored wedges of battle wagons. The first wave bore rams, and it was their duty to break open the outer walls, using their tracks to carry them over the rubble. The second group of attackers followed in the wake of the smoking, churning battle wagons. These were the mobile infantry, mostly goth boys, with mobs of burner boys amongst them. The third wave was composed of scorches, their orders to drive through the breaches and clear any defenses with sweeping flame. Tractor beams would then target the gates as the battle wagons cleared the last trench. Timed correctly, the loaded wagons would be at top speed just as the doors were ripped from their hinges. Secondary plans included a storm boy airdrop and stompas with wrecking balls opening up holes at strategic points. When the waves of infantry were finally released, they would enter Volcanus at will. The plan worked almost too well. The hive would have fallen in a single day were it not for its fierce resistance. Within the narrow confines of the hive's underways, desperate humans resorted to all manners of traps and ambushes. Despite their heroics, hundreds of thousands of orcs swept into the hive Volcanus, and its population was massacred or enslaved. After Hive Volcanus was captured, the remaining hives of Armageddon Prime soon followed. Columns of humans' refugees stretched out across the horizon. All of the Armageddon Prime lay under the massive metal heel of Grazgol. What was once manufactorums were converted into workshops, swarming with orcs. Slaves were worked to death, stripping their own cities of every scrap of resource that the mechs could use to fuel the greenskin war machine. The WAG proceeded southward towards the heavily populated continent of Armageddon Secundus. And next, part six, Commissar Yarek. Bye!